everybody, Joe coming to you today. We're going to talk about monitor calibration, why it's so important, and how to do it. Why is it so important? Let's talk about that first, because that's really critical. Think about it. When you're doing editing with Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you use, you're making decisions based on what you see on the screen. Well, what if your screen's not right? What if your screen is set too bright or too blue, as is common, because most screens are designed to be their best when doing video, not necessarily photography. So you might want to have your screen a little darker and a little more yellow to give you more accurate color. Because when you're doing an edit on a screen that hasn't been calibrating, you're hoping it's right. The problem is the files might be wrong. And when you send it out to a lab or out to your printer, you might find yourself getting dark prints that are too yellow because you're adding yellow into them because they look too blue. Anyway, not important, but really, if your monitor is accurate, then the edits you're making on an image are going to be reflected when you go out to a print. So right now, for example, I'm working on this lovely image that I want to make a big print of, and I want to send it to the lab once and get my print looking like that. So in order to do that, I have to make sure that my monitor is showing me the colors that it's showing me on the screen to the best of its ability. Now to do that, you need to calibrate your monitor. I've got two devices here. I've got one new little favorite. This, this thing is awesome because it's inexpensive and it is simple to use. This is the Calibrite Display 123. We're just gonna hang it on the screen and tell it to do its thing. Now, this device is great, but it's not for everyone. For example, if you have a monitor that uses mini LED or OLED technology, or you have something like one of the new Apple XDR displays, this is not gonna handle it. If you have one of those displays, you're gonna need to move up to something like this. This is the Calibrate Display Pro HL. So I would use this if I'm doing that kind of monitor. Now also technically I've got a setup here that I shouldn't be doing with this device. I can work around it, but I've got three monitors. This device will support two monitors simultaneously, so technically I should disconnect this one, but I'm just going to let it go for now. Now these devices use the same software, but the software changes depending on what's plugged into it as far as its capabilities go. If I plug in the more advanced calibrator, it will open up a lot more options and do a more precise calibration. That said, if you have a standard LED monitor, this thing's going to do a pretty darn good job and certainly much better than having a monitor that's not calibrated at all. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how easy this is to do. So I just tabbed over to the software. I've already got this plugged in. I know it's got power because the little light up on the top is blinking. There's a little weight on the cable that hangs over the monitor that allows it to stay in place. So I, it sees my two monitors. So I'm going to choose the one and it asks me, do I want photo or native? I want, since I'm doing it for photography, I have photo chosen. I simply click on next. And then it tells me, hang this in the little circle in the middle. So let's go ahead and put that in place. All right, so I've got the calibrator sitting in the little gray circle, and now I'm just going to tell it to go ahead and measure. Now, this part's going to take five minutes or so, so we'll cut to the chase. But what it's going to do is it's going to first measure the brightness. Now, my brightness is set at one is at 117 right now, and the number we want is 120. It's candelas to, per meter squared. Just go with it. It's already good there, so I just click on Next and it tells me that it's measuring don't move the device. So what the software is gonna do is send up a whole bunch of colors to this circle in the middle and the device is gonna read them. It's gonna read the white point, it's gonna read the black point, and then it's gonna go through all the colors. So what happens with the profile after it's created, say for example, the software sends up 100% red. The device reads it and instead of 100% red, let's say for argument's sake, it sees 97% red and 3% blue that gets included into the profile because a profile is simply a set of corrections to make sure that when you ask your monitor to do something, it does it. So after the profile's created and it has all these little adjustments that need to be made, the next time your software tells the monitor, give me 100% red, that will go through the profile. The profile will say, well, remember, you gotta take out 3% blue 
to get that 100% red. Yes, I'm oversimplifying, but basically that's what's happening. When it's done, the monitor will then be performing to the best of its ability to show you the correct color and brightness on the screen. So it's not just about color, it's gonna be about brightness and contrast as well. But now, when this is done, I know that what I see on the screen is accurately reflecting the data in the image file. So that when I send that out to the lab, I'm gonna get a print that is as close as possible going to look like what we have on the screen. So let's go ahead and let this thing finish and I'll be back to you in a minute. I mentioned this thing takes about five minutes to do its thing. So while I'm doing that, I'm just going to, again, I'll show you the Display Pro HL. Uh, one other advantage this device has besides doing monitors is if you have an LCD projector, maybe you're a camera club and you want your projector to be projecting images on a screen well, as well, this device can also calibrate a projector. So just saying. But again, if you have a mini LED, an OLED, or an XDR type display, this is the one you need. But just make sure you're doing something to calibrate your monitors if you're involved in printing your photographs. So I see on the screen that it's done. Let's get this off. I'll get this off of the monitor so I can see what's going on. It's given it a name. It's given it the monitor name plus the date. That's fine. You can call it whatever you want, but that works. You can also set a profile reminder. You probably want to profile your monitor, I would say once a month. You can get away with three, but really, it just takes five minutes and you don't even have to be here while it's doing it. So it's a good thing to do once a month. Now, I do have multiple monitors here. So you have to run the profile software for each monitor you want to profile. So I'm just going to tell it to go ahead and save this. It's going to not only save the profile, but it's going to put it into action. It's going to implement it. And you can see here, oh, I see an after thing. So I can see before and after. So I can do a before and after review. When you do this the first time, chances are the differences you're going to see are going to be fairly extreme. But as you start profiling, then over time, the variations will be much less. So now I can just hit done. And that's it. The Profile has been implemented in the system. Go on to your next monitor or you can be done, get into your software and start doing those color edits. So that's a quick overview of monitor calibration. Again, I've got two devices here. The Display Pro HL for those mini LED, OLED and XDR monitors. And if you have a standard LCD monitor like this one here, this is gonna do you just fine. So that's it for today, more to come, but Monitor calibration is important because if your monitor is not showing you the right colors, then the edits you're doing are guesswork. We want to eliminate that. We want to get great prints that are consistent from our lab and from our desktop printers. Thanks for joining me. See you online again soon. Bye-bye.